The expulsion of Spain is the Holocaust, the major trauma in our awareness that we Jews of Spanish origin cannot forget to this day. It is deep, deep within our memory. The expulsion from Spain, and as, as a result of the expulsion from Spain, and also from Portugal, Turkey opens its gates to the Jews. They opened up their country to the Jews, and this was of the greatest importance. Here we really need to sing the praises of the Sultan who did this, right? Who opened the Ottoman Empire to the Jews who came from Spain and from Portugal. And so the awareness of the Jews in Turkey is a Spanish awareness, a Spanish memory. Now, it is not just a memory, preservation of the memory, preservation of the customs, preservation of the prayers of Spain, but first and foremost, the language. In other words, although they came to the Ottoman Empire and integrated in the economy and the commerce and learned Turkish, in practice the Jewish language was Judeo-Spanish, Judesmo Espanol Ladino. You are a Jew if you speak Ladino. If you don't speak Ladino, you aren't a Jew, or your Judaism is in doubt. The important thing that I want to focus on is the music. If you come, let's say, to Galata in Istanbul, in order to go down towards Neve Shalom, you will see that at the entrance you have a Sufi order. On the way down to Neve Shalom, on the left, you have there, it's called Sufi dance. When they dance it, and there my friend Professor Sarusi told me that he interviewed the head of the order, who is now deceased, and asked him, did he teach Jewish cantors? And the answer was, of course, all the Jewish cantors in Neve Shalom studied with me. But he said he added something else. And then he began to sing a song to him. A liturgy in Hebrew. That is, the Turkish Sufi sang a song from the Hebrew prayer book. He didn't understand anything, but he quoted more than 72 verses of the liturgy. In other words, what we see here is the kind of dialogue in music. The Jew learns the tunes, yes. The traditional Turkish melodies, and the Turk also learns the melodies of the Jews. So here we see the interfaith dialogue that passes through the music. In Izmir, we have also a large Christian minority. So here in Izmir too, we see the influences, the Christian influences meaning a Jewish, Christian and Muslim connection, this is what is unique in Izmir, the Christian majority of Izmir. You have to understand that Izmir as a port city was born in the 17th century. And at that time, Jewish families, among others the family of Sabatai Tzvi, migrated from the Peloponnese Peninsula to Izmir. And that is when the community of Izmir was established as a trading community, trading overseas. But at the same time, there was also a migration of Greeks to Izmir. That is, the Christians, this is Greek Orthodox Christianity, which is very hard, that is, it is not easy. Its attitude towards the Jews is not simple at all. For the most part, in its mirror, there was a fierce struggle between the Greek Orthodox and the Jews. In fact, they preserved all the literary genres that they brought with them from the Spanish world in the 16th century. In the 17th century, a change took place in the creative work of the Spanish-speaking Jews. They gradually abandoned the philosophy and sciences they had brought with them from Spain and began turning towards Kabbalah. In other words, what characterized them was turning to Jewish mysticism, to the Kabbalah, immersing themselves in Kabbalah and leaving the sciences that were characteristic of Spanish Jewish culture in the Iberian Peninsula. And this was in line with the spiritual move taking place in the Ottoman Empire itself, in the mystic Sufi streams, that is Turkish Sufism, Turkish mysticism, that was taking hold of the Ottoman Empire. Sciences and philosophy were in decline, and this is what enabled the rise of the Messianic Sabbatean movement, established by Sabbatai Svi. You must understand that in the Portuguese synagogue, which was destroyed, Sabbatai Svi brought women up to read Torah in public for the first time. This happened for the first time in the history of the synagogues of Izmir. Yes, it's a shame that this synagogue has not been preserved. 
Sabbatai Svi brought women up to the Torah in the 17th century, and in fact, it was the Sabbateans and the Sabbatean crisis that eventually caused the demise of the city of Izmir. In other words, the city of Izmir reached its peak in the 17th century, and after the Sabbatean crisis, in fact, in terms of community life, the community began to degenerate. There was a very large group of Maranos in Izmir, and you see that all the childhood friends of Sabbatai Svi were Maranos. In other words, the Sabbatean revolution is also based on the world of the Maranos, because the Maranos who returned to Judaism had difficulty, meaning that they did not accept rabbinical Judaism as it was. They were critical, they had doubts. And in fact, the Sabbatean revolution was an answer to the problems of the Maranos who came. In other words, the Maranos did not really return to rabbinical Judaism, they were critical of a number of things. And so if you look at the Sabbateans, you see that the majority of them were Maranos, playing with their identity, who did not really return to Judaism. They were also partly New Christian, Marano. In other words, there were all kinds of games here within the empire, within the... Mainly among the merchants, as part of commercial life, if you wanted to trade with Italy, say, and you identified as a Murano, you had problems. And so you played with your identity or with France, for example, in other words, with the Catholic countries. The most important reason was to say, in our case to the Turks, Jews lived here, Jews worked here. In other words, it deals with memory and forgetting. I see an attempt in the Islamic world today to try and say that the Jews were never here, and if they were here, they did not work here, and if they worked here, they made no contribution. And so, synagogues are milestones of memory to the Jewish tradition, to the Jews who worked and enriched the, in our case, the culture of Ottoman in Izmir. The Jews of Izmir, the Jews of Turkey. It is not to do with the Jews of Turkey. It is not to do with the Jews of Izmir. It is to do with the Jewish people. And so, anyone who contributes to this project, no matter what ethnic group they come from, that is completely irrelevant. We see this project, the synagogues of Izmir, as having to do with the Jewish people and not only the heritage of the Jews of Turkey. It's true that they can contribute, they can help, but in fact it is a mitzvah for each and every one of us to support the Izmir project and to preserve the synagogues. And so, in this great discussion over the preservation of the synagogues, of the biggest communities in the world, the approach of the Izmir project is to restore, to preserve synagogues, not only for Jewish history. It is a universal matter of human culture. For this reason, it is important for UNESCO also to recognize these synagogues. That is, the use of the synagogues, of these holy places. There are places sanctified by people, whoever they are, and not only Jews, and also in terms of historic memory. We were there, we worked there, and we created these sanctified places across the Ottoman Empire, and in our case, in Izmir.